Let's say you want to create a campaign with that groups and ads in a single API request. Can that be done? And what happens if one of these operations fails? Welcome to Advanced Mutations, part of our Best Practices series. My name is Mattia Tomazone, and today we will discuss advanced topics related to performing mutates with the Google Ads API, such as multi-resource mutates, field masks, batch jobs, and the response content type field to optimize your API requests and significantly increase the performance of your applications. By the end of this video, you will have the answers to the question I just asked, and much more. Let's start by demonstrating how to mutate multiple entities at once. Usually, when you want to update a resource, you use the corresponding mutate method in the Google Ads API, like campaign service.mutate campaigns, or any of the other more specific endpoints, like recommendation service.apply recommendation request. However, you can also mutate several different resources in a single API call using the Google Ads service.mutate method. The Google Ads service.mutate method accepts a request that can contain entities of different types, while specific mutate operations like campaign service.mutate campaigns only allow you to mutate a single entity type, like campaigns. This means that with a single API operation, you can mutate several different entities like campaigns, ad groups, ads, assets, and all sorts of other entities. This has two main advantages. First, it helps you reduce the number of API calls by grouping together several mutation requests. But it also has a very practical use case that is exactly what I mentioned at the beginning. Let's revisit the questions I posed at the start of this video. Now, if you want to create an app ad campaign from scratch, you have to create many different entities like a budget, a campaign, an ad group, and an ad. What happens, though, if one of these creation operations fails? Let's say creating the ad group fails, for instance. If you use the resource-specific services to create each entity separately, you would end up having orphaned objects, like the budget and the campaign, that would end up polluting your account. Instead, by using Google Ads service.mutate, you will make sure that either all entities are created or none of them is. A good question now would be, okay, but how do I link together entities that have not been created yet? The answer is by using temporary IDs. If you set the resource name of an entity being created to a negative integer, like minus one in this example, the Google Ads API will assign to it a correct positive ID once the creation has succeeded. The cool thing about this is that you can also use the temporary negative ID as a reference in other entities that you want to be linked to the one you just created. For example, in this case, we are creating a campaign with temporary ID minus one and an ad group belonging to that campaign. We associate the two by using minus one in the campaign resource name inside the ad group creation operation. There are some caveats, though, to the usage of temporary IDs. First of all, the order of operations is important. If you want to reference another entity being created, the creation needs to be before the referencing operation in your multi-resource mutate or in your batch job. Besides, you can use the same temporary ID inside a single API request or job. This is because once the request completes, you will have the actual ID assigned by the Google Ads API at your disposal, and that is the identifier you should be using. Another very important aspect is that inside a mutant request or a best job, temporary IDs must be unique. This means that you cannot use minus one as a temporary ID for a campaign and an ad group being created in the same mutate operation. They have to differ. Also, note that our client libraries provide utilities to manage temporary IDs, so that will make your life easier. As a rule of thumb, grouping together mutate operation in a single API request is a good practice, and you should be doing so as much as you can. This is because every request comes with a slight overhead and grouping together your operations allows you to reduce this overhead and the overall payload size of your requests. Besides, 
If your operations don't belong to a process that is supposed to be atomic, you can set partial failure to true to make sure each of your operations will succeed or fail independently, returning mutated entities for successful operations and errors for failed ones, if any. Keep in mind that even if your mutated request was successful, it does not necessarily mean that the whole process was. There are some operations that are computed asynchronously by the Google Ads backend, such as conversion uploading, that can then fail even if the API requests were successful. Now, the next question would be, is there a limit to the number of operations that you can put in a single API request? And if there is, is there a way to overcome this limit? Again, the answer is yes to both questions. Now, both single resource services like Campaign Service and Google Ads.Mutate have a limit of 5,000 operations per request. So they may not be suitable in case you have a very large number of operations to perform at once. For this use case, the Google Ads API provides batch jobs that allow up to a million operations per job and are designed to be executed asynchronously. This means that you first create your job then you add the list of new data operations that you want your job to perform, and then you run the job, which will not complete immediately. Instead, you can pull the status of the job, and only once it is complete, you can retrieve its results and errors, if any. The Google Ads API also requires you to be explicit in identifying the fields that you want to mutate when updating an entity. This is done through the usage of field masks. The fill mask in an update operation is the list of fields that are going to be updated, and it needs to be passed as a parameter to all update requests. To generate the correct fill mask, you can use the utility functions and classes provided by the client libraries. For instance, in this case, we are updating the status field in a campaign, which means we need to set the value status inside the field mask to tell the API that we want to update that specific field. By using the allSetFieldsOf method offered by the Java client library, we are populating the field mask with the right values. Additionally, this means that in case we update another field, the field mask will automatically be populated with all the fields that require an update, reducing the developer efforts required to make sure that the mutation operation happens correctly. When you want to mutate an entity that has subfields, though, you have to pay special attention to these subfields. In this case, we want to set the bidding strategy of a campaign to maximize conversions. However, this mutate operation will fail. The maximize conversion object being passed is empty, and empty objects are not allowed in field masks to prevent values from accidentally being cleared. The correct way to achieve the behavior we want, then, is to explicitly set the maximize conversions path in the field mask, along with the target CPA micros property, which is the only mutable property in a maximize conversions object, to tell the Google Ads API that we want to set the maximize conversions property. Because this field is included in the field mask, but not in the campaign object, the Google Ads API will set the campaign's bidding strategy to an empty maximize conversions object, without any of its subfields set. Now, earlier, we touched briefly on the topic of payload size and number of requests for performance improvement. The final best practice of today's episode is exactly about this. You can set the response content type in all your mutate request objects, and this will determine the content of the response you will receive once your request is completed. By default, mutate operations will only return the resource name of the mutated entities. But you can also choose to set the response content type to mutable resource to also receive the mutable fields of the resource you just mutated in the response. This will allow you to verify that your resource was mutated correctly or to reuse it in subsequent operations without needing to issue an additional API request to retrieve it. This concludes our exploration of advanced mutation operations. If you found these suggestions helpful, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, because we will talk again soon about more best practices and we'll share more videos and news about the Google Ads API. Thanks for watching.